Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels proclaim, all his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise his Lord, ye heaven of heavens, and he floods above the sky. Let them praise his give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Let them praises give Jehovah. They were made at his command. Then forever he established his decree shall never stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, guard the ye dragons all, fire and hail and snow. Give Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted for above the earth and sky. In majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that may might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the fall. Thou hast devised salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. You didn't get to experience it, but I had about an inch of snow at the house. I love snow, and I couldn't help singing the first song, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah, is coming through. 96 and coming up I-40. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's beautiful to see. and God certainly blesses us in all different kinds of ways. And, um, it's neat to see the snow. I'm a snow guy, so six or eight inches would be fine with me. Some of you may hate me for that, but I keep praying for it. Um, consecrate. Not a word we use a lot today, but what does it mean? Well, the Webster Dictionary defines it as to solemnly and deeply dedicate yourself to a sacred purpose. To solemnly and deeply dedicate yourself to a sacred purpose. To concentrate, consecrate. Wayne's lesson today is really about consecration. Are we really committed? Are we really engaged? And are we really there to support and help and foster and do, it's an action, all those things, an action, what God wants us to do and to bring Jesus to the world that desperately needs it. So 
Today's lesson, today's songs are going to be about that. God is the fountain whence 10,000 blessings flow. To Him my life, my health, and friends, and every good I owe. The comforts He affords are neither few nor small. He is the source of fresh delights, my portion and my all. He fills my heart with joy, my lips attunes for praise, and to his glory I'll devote the remnant of my days. Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without Thee. I do not try to take one step alone. I cannot Let us pray. Father, which art in heaven, we're thankful unto thee for this day that thou hast given unto us, and especially this day as Christians. Remember, this is the Lord's day that we're together with other Christians to worship. We pray that thou'd be with us, that we do this in a manner and a way that is acceptable unto thee, beneficial unto us for being here this morning and being with other Christians. We do pray that this <clears throat> epidemic can soon be over for everyone and we can get back possibly to a normal way of life and we can gather as Christians together fellowship and that uh, things may go along a little smoother than they have been in this past year. We are thankful for each family represented here at Highland. Be with them. We have a lot of our members who are out and we pray for them and their recovery that they might be back with us once again and be with them and their families. We're thankful for those that serve here in different capacities. We're thankful for all those. And we pray that I'd bless the work here at Highland. Uh, be with all the missionaries that we support and watch over them and their families at this time. We pray now that I'd continue to be with us this day, watch over us, keep us safe. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem reigns. So exalt, lift up on high, the name of Jesus, magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all Jesus the King, Majesty, worship His Majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I as a parent can't imagine doing that. To give up one of my children to die for somebody they didn't even know. But Christ did that. That showed great love from our father. And think about Jesus. He came to earth. He was a human being just like us. And he gave up his, not only his bodily life, his physical life, 
But he gave up his desires, the way he wanted to do things. In the end, when he was praying, he said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. From that, I take it he didn't want to die. But yet he had enough love for God that he was willing to do his will. We need to show that great love also. How do we show that great love? If you love me, keep my commandments. We need to just remember that. All this was done so that we might have the hope of eternal life. And I hope as we go throughout this memorial service and throughout our lives, we'll always remember the great love that was shown for us. The life that Jesus lived to show us how to spread that love and the sacrifice he made daily, the living sacrifice that they talk about. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come before you giving you thanks for the so many things that you give us. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus, who came to earth and died that we might have forgiveness of sins. As we partake of this way for Heavenly Father, we pray that we will realize that we are now part of that body. And with that body, we will sacrifice our own desires and always do your will. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shall we pray again? Our most heavenly Father, we're again thankful. Thankful that you did have so much love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As we partake of this cup through the vine which represents the blood that was shed for us, may we always want to return that love to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have an opportunity to give back a portion of the many material blessings that uh, God gave us. And as many of you know, today is our Super Sunday where we give back to the Lawrence Gardner Fund. You probably got an envelope when you came in that uh, you can put your contribution in and put it in one of the boxes as you leave, or you can contribute on tidily or give it to, send it to the office, just however you want to do it. But remember that we are so blessed with the things that we need in our daily lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again thanking you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. And I know that we take these things for granted quite often. But let us be willing to know that we are blessed and be willing to share our blessings with others around us. We know that there are a lot of people out there that are hurting physically, financially, and otherwise. And we just pray that we will look into our hearts to give back so that we may continue the work here at Highland through our missionaries and through our benevolence program in any other way that we can show your love through our actions. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Though my cross may be hard to bear, though my life may be filled with care, though misfortune be mine to share, I'll never forsake my Lord. I'll never forsake the Savior. He is never forsaken.
forsaken me, neath the sheltering calm, I am safe from all harm, I'll never forsake my Lord, though so helpless I can not see what the future may hold for me. Jesus knows and my guide will be. I'll never forsake my Lord. I'll never forsake the Savior. He has never forsaken me. Neath the sheltering arm, I am safe from all to have you guys with us today, especially if you're visiting. We're honored that you're here and certainly invite you to come back and join us any opportunity that you have. I, I know there, there's a lot of questions that are going around in terms of the pandemic, and I can assure you that the greatest desire that we have is that soon we'll all be able to be in one room at one time and be safe. Uh, that's not just exactly right now, but we, we do feel like we're getting closer. If you watch the numbers, they are coming down, and that's a good thing. And so we're looking forward to it, and we think it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, in the next few weeks, hopefully we can begin to make other decisions and, uh, and, and, and move toward getting back to where we were over a year ago. Uh, but it's not right now. But you're here today. We're going to have another building at building full at 1030. I say full. This is, this is, this, this is what we call full now. And um, they're going to come in at 1030, and we're going to worship with them. But one day, we're all going to be back in here together. And I just ask you to keep praying for that. Uh, keep being vigilant and being safe and uh, wearing your mask, social distancing, keeping your hands washed, just making sure that people are healthy and well. And as those numbers come down, uh, then we're going to be able to get back to where we want to be. But I assure you that that is our goal, and that is what we wish for. The title of our lesson today is, Lord, Is It I? And if you're a Bible student, you know exactly where it's coming from, and, and we'll read that passage in just a minute. But I want you to think about, if, if you've lost a loved one, I want you to think about the last time you were with them. Or maybe, maybe it wasn't the last time. Maybe it was some momentous occasion that happened right before they died. I'll tell you, I've got a couple because I've had two losses in my life, and that's it. And I feel privileged to be almost 61 years old and only having lost two people in my family. But I remember the day my brother called the family together, and we all met at my parents' house. And, and, and it, you know, it's, it's an intimate setting. It's me and, and my wife and it's my brother and his wife and my other brother and his wife and my mom and dad. And, 
and, and we're sitting in the den, and, and my brother gets up, and he tells us that he's got cancer. It's not curable. It's going to be quick, and uh, within four months, he was gone. I, I remember the last time we got together with my dad on a, on a special occasion. He had his birthday in September, and then he died in December. And again, it's, it's an intimate setting. It's family. It's, it's my wife and children, my brother's wife and children, and, and my mom and dad, and, and, and it's this small setting. And this is where we find Jesus the night before he was betrayed and arrested in a room, intimate setting, with his closest disciples. Now, I really can't imagine had my brother looked at me on that day and telling us that he was going to leave us, I can't imagine him looking at me and saying, Wayne, you're going to betray me. Because at that moment, every, every emotion that I had was love for him. I, I can't imagine my dad looking at me at that birthday party and, 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 and we're all there and him looking at me and saying, Wayne, you're going to betray me. Because again, it was, it was a love was the greatest emotion that I felt. And this is where we find Jesus. This, we, this is what we read in Matthew 26, beginning in verse 20. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. He didn't say which one, one of you. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He who dipped his, di his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The, the Son of Man will go just as, as it is written of him, but woe to him, to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? And he said to him, you have said it. I believe what Jesus said, that it would have been better if Judas had never been born. I can't imagine somebody doing what Judas did for 30 pieces of silver. I, I can't tell you exactly what 30 pieces of silver would be worth today, but I can tell you that it was the cost of a common slave in the first century. This was not an exorbitant amount of money, but even if it was 30,000 pieces of silver, I, 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 can't, I can't wrap my head around what Judas was doing and what he was thinking but I do know this, that Judas was not the last one to betray Jesus. This morning, all around the world, Christians are gathering to worship him. But I promise you that all around the world, there are Christians, disciples, those people who say they love Jesus, that are betraying him this morning. by deciding that, that something else is more worthy of their time and attention than worshiping the one who died for them. Or maybe it's some sin that they're involved in that, that, that they're unwilling to give up the sin in order to worship the Savior. And so this idea of betrayal did not, it didn't end with Judas. Judas. And if all of us are honest enough, we're going to be able to pick out some point or many points in our lives where we were the betrayers. Where we decided that something was more worthy of our time and attention than worshiping the risen Savior. Where we decided that some sin was preferable to standing up for Jesus and what he's asked of us. 
betrayal didn't end with Judas. But the question that he asked is a pertinent one today, and that is, is it I? Is it I? Notice, first of all, that we could be like the disciples on that occasion and, and really not know if it's us. One of you are going to betray me. Maybe I'm like Peter. I would be more brash and say, well, I know it's not me. It must be Mark. It must be somebody else. It can't be me. But look at verse 22 again. They were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? They didn't know. Because they all knew that they were capable of it. I think every one of them realized that, that they were capable, at some level, of betraying Jesus. I like the way the, the New American Standard Bible puts it. it. It puts it in the negative. Being deeply grieved, they began saying to him, each one, surely it's not I, Lord. And maybe that's where we would be. Maybe that's where we would be. We, we, would, we would say, surely it's not me. Surely it's not me, Lord. But they didn't know. And I wonder how many of us today can be confident that we're not the betrayers, nor will we ever be. How many of us can confidently stand up and say, I will never deny Jesus, I will never betray Jesus? It, it really is a tall order because all of us at some point in the past have been the betrayers. And while I would hope that nobody in this room today knows that they will betray Jesus, there are those people around the world today that say they're Christians that have full knowledge that today they've made some plan to do something that they know would betray what Jesus did for them on that cross. Is it I? Sure, surely it's not me. In 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 5, Paul says to the Corinthian church, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Examine yourselves. Test yourselves. Is it possible that you already have plans to betray Jesus, is it possible that betraying Jesus is not a big deal to you because you've done it so many times? Is it possible that if Jesus was standing here today and he stood up in this pulpit and he said, some of you will betray me, that there would be those of us that would have to ask the question, is it I? Lord, is it me? Surely it's not me. Surely, Lord, it's not me. Paul says, you better examine yourself. Test yourself. Decide, could it, could it be you? Could it be me? Then he said to the church in, in Galatia, chapter 6 and verse 4 of Galatians, let each one examine his own work. I, I find this interesting because now we bring another aspect into it. He's talking about work. And I hope that you have a chance to watch our house church YouTube video tonight because it, it deals kind of with this subject about working. I mean, we're fully aware that we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace through faith. We're surely aware of that. With all of the accusations that are made against us sometimes that we have a works-based salvation, it's, it's, it's false and it's negative and it's wrong. I, I don't know of anybody that thinks they can earn their salvation through work. But work tells us something. James says, show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith, how? 
by my works. I mean, there's something about having a committed, consecrated faith in Jesus that the works kind of just follow. And again, we'll talk about that tonight in our, in our house church video. But he says, let each one examine his own work. If we have no works, if there's no proof of our faith, if there's no proof of our commitment, if there's no proof of our consecration to Jesus, then I would say it's highly more likely that we would betray him, that we would be the ones that would deny him, betray him, because our works say something about who we are and how committed we are to Jesus. Let each one examine his own work, and, and the, then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So we could be like the disciples and, and not, not really know whether we're the betrayer or not, or whether we will be the betrayer. And, and I, I tell you, each and every one of us should be praying about that, that says, Lord, do not ever let me deny you. Do not ever let me betray you. Never let me believe that something is more worthy of my time and my attention than you are. There is no sin pleasurable enough that would cause me to deny you and betray you by the life that I live. But we could be like the disciples and not know. Or we could be like Judas. And the fact is, we already know. Again, I have no doubts that around the world today, there are people that wear the name of Jesus that have already decided that today they will betray him. Something is more important. Something seems more pleasurable. Something seems like it's going to be better for them, more enjoyable to them, than worshiping the Lord and obeying the Lord. And I hope that's nobody here today, but it could be. It could be. Hence the reason Paul said, examine yourselves, right? Right? But we could be like Judas. We could already know. Look at verse 25, and I don't know if you caught this as we were reading it the first time. Then Judas, who was betraying him, the, the fact is that he was in the process. He had already gone and gotten his 30 pieces of silver before he came to the meeting, before he came to the meal, before he walked in that room of intimacy with Jesus and his closest friends on earth, before he walked in the room, he was already in the process of betraying Jesus. Some may have walked into church today. They may have walked into a worship service today in the very act of betraying Jesus. Judas already knew. He knew he was the one. Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? And I, I, it doesn't seem to have bothered Judas what Jesus says after this. You have said it. The answer is yes, Judas, it's you. I have no doubts, again, that what Jesus said about Judas is true, that it had been better if he'd never been born. But I want you to see how Judas reacted after he realized his sin. Chapter 27 and verse 3. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, talking about Jesus, was remorseful. And he brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. Do you really think they cared? Their answer proves they didn't. They said, what is that to us? They didn't care that he was innocent. They didn't care that Judas now says, you've got the wrong man. He doesn't deserve what you're doing to him. What is that to us, they said. You see, you see to it. He threw down the pieces of silver in the temple, and he departed, and he went and hanged himself. 
in some ways, Judas was better than some people today because at least he had pains of conscience in betraying Jesus. As despicable an act as this was, at least Judas realized the sin that he had committed. And he went out and hanged himself. How does that compare to us today when we knowingly, willingly, with premeditated planning, betray Jesus by our sin, by our actions, by our putting other things before him? Do we at least have some pangs of conscience that says, I have betrayed an innocent man? We're on the other side of the cross. I mean, do we have any pains of conscience that says, Jesus Christ hung on a tree for me. He died on a cross for me. And I have betrayed him for something like 30 pieces of silver or a couple of hours of free time or a few minutes of pleasure. Do we at least have some pains of conscience At least Judas did. And even the Apostle Peter, in his denial of Jesus, look look at Luke 22, beginning in verse 61. After he denied Jesus for the third time, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. I can't even imagine that. Locking eyes with the Savior after the third time you have denied that you even knew who he was. The Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Do do we at least have some pains of conscience when we already know we're the betrayers? Peter did. Even Judas did. So we could, we could be like Judas. We could already know that we are the betrayers. So the question then is, how do we safeguard ourselves from being betrayers of Jesus? Because you're, you're here today. I have, to, I have to make the assumption that you love Jesus, that you love the Lord, that, that you're thankful for what he did for you. And if you're sitting here today and you know that you are a frequent betrayer, denier of Jesus by the way you live, by the works in your life, there should be this this pain of conscience that causes us to be remorseful, having godly sorrow, Paul calls it, godly sorrow that leads to repentance. And then there needs to be some way of safeguarding ourselves from being the betrayers of Jesus. And and I I went through numerous passages this week as I was was trying to come to grips with this last point. And and there, I could could have put a hundred different passages up here from the Old Testament and, and especially in the New about how we safeguard ourselves. And I chose this one because I I I think that it I think that it gives us the foundation for really safeguarding our souls not to be betrayers. Peter said it in 2 Peter 1, beginning in verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, that word keeps coming up, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. You believe in Jesus, then be virtuous. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. If you don't have self-control, I promise you, you're going to deny Jesus. You're going to betray Jesus. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. To brotherly kindness, love. And this is where the safeguarding part comes in. Peter says, Look, for if you do these things, 
If these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we diligently seek to add to our faith virtue, virtue knowledge, knowledge self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, as we diligently seek to add these things to our lives, Peter says if you do this, then you assure yourself that you, you won't be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He who lacks these things is short-sighted. You're likely to be a betrayer, even to blindness. And he's forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. There's that word again. Be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. And here's the safeguard. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. I love this passage because I think all of us are looking for something that says, how can I know that I will never be the betrayer? How can I know that I will never deny Jesus? How can I know, how can I safeguard myself that I will not stumble? Peter says, here it is. Diligently add these things to your life and you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. Here's the promise. The entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what I want. I hope that's what you want. I hope that you want it bad enough today that you will never betray Jesus again. I hope that I want it bad enough today that I will never betray Jesus again, that I will never decide that something is more important than worshiping him, getting to know him, communing with him, that I will, that I will never stumble and, and just sin premeditatedly, knowingly, with forethought and malice. Sin against the Lord Jesus Christ who died for me. And may we all desire that entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe what Jesus said. It had been better if Judas had never been born. But I know that I too have been a betrayer. May it never happen again. May it never happen again. And, and may none of us be sitting here today knowing that we're in the process, like Judas, of betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he died for us. Thank you for being with us today. Keep praying that this pandemic, Albert, I appreciate your prayer. Keep praying that this pandemic will get behind us. We can come together as a family again. But today we have the opportunity to confess our faith in Jesus. And if you've never done that, if you've never confessed your faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, if you've never been baptized for the remission of your sins, we have that opportunity today. Or if you know that there's some sin in your life that, that you can't fight on your own. And by the way, you can't. You can't. Without Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you're not going to fight these sins on your own. But if you're to a point where you know you need the prayers of this church, then we invite you to come. And we invite you to come while we stand and sing this song. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend,
Good morning. Thank you so much for being here, Wayne. Thank you for that lesson today. Great thoughts there. We have to take into our week. This week, we got a few announcements to make. Today is Ur Sunday, right? No soup, but Ur Sunday. We're thankful you're all here today. And Lawrence Gardner Fund is something we are collecting for today. If you didn't get an envelope on your way in, please uh, check one of those when you go out. And we can also give online for that. But we're hoping to supply a great amount of the Lawrence Gardner Fund today that we will need to uh, for all of our families during the year. So please uh, take advantage of that. Also, we have great news. The Walk for Water, um, we have gotten all the money that we need for that well in Zimbabwe. So we praise God for that. Thank you so much for your generosity. And uh, no telling how many people will benefit from that in Africa. But uh, thank you again for that. And we're so thankful to have that fulfilled. And also, um, Valentine bags are out in the foyer, ready for you to help us out. Um, they are ready to be picked up and taken. So if you would, on your way out, if you have time this week, please take one of the bags and uh, deliver them for us. Uh, you'll see the name and address on the bag that you pick up. We really would appreciate that. And please see Dora Pope if you have any questions about that particular ministry. Again, so grateful to be here together today. Thank you so much. For, uh, for coming and worshiping with us together today. If you're at home, thank you for being with us as well. Let's pray together and we'll be dismissed. Our Father God, we thank you so much for the ways you bless us, the ways you love us, the way you take care of us every day. Most of the things, Father, I think that you do for us, maybe sometimes we don't even know. So it's important for us to know, Father, and to give you glory and thanks for everything in our lives because every good thing comes from you. And Father, this, uh, this day is a blessing. Thank you for the message we've heard. Help us, Lord, to be your people in this world, to shine your light, to always be willing to acknowledge you as our Lord and to live for you each day. And Father, I pray and thank you so much for, for everybody uh, at Highland. Thank you for our families. 
We have people who are hurting. We have people who have lost loved ones. We have people who are ill. And we ask that you would touch each one with the specific needs that they have and a blessing, Lord, that, that you would give them. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And may we uh, make a difference in the world this week. Be kind to those around us and always be thankful for Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay, if our ushers would come forward, we will dismiss our...